we can see there have been attempts to label the effects of COVID-19 in generational and generationalist terms. This comes both in the form of speculating and differentiating the consequences of the virus for various assumed generational groups and ascribing characteristics to a new and assumed COVID-19 generation. Note, the COVID-19 generation is socially constructed in specific contexts. Indeed, the construction and adoption of stereotypes of generations, for example, labeling groups of people as baby boomers or the quarantines, may help us make sense of our social worlds and understand the complexities of aging and the impact of major events such as the COVID-19 pandemic. But these kind of taken for granted generationalized narratives often obscure the practice of generationalism and ageism. So what do we mean by generationalism? Generationalism refers to the espoused belief that members of any given generation possess specific defining characteristics that distinguish them from members of other generations. Generationalism can be dangerous because it legitimizes broad generalizations about people of different birth cohorts based on homogenous assumptions while ignoring differences between individuals. Generationalism is also a form of ageism that can result in age-based discrimination if left unchecked. We have already seen how the role of ageism is playing out in the current pandemic. For example, the World Health Organization Director General has suggested that some countries deemed the threat, quote, less worthy of the best efforts to contain it, unquote, because older people are disproportionately affected relative to younger people. Similarly, in one U.S. state, an official suggested that older individuals should be willing to die for the benefit of the nation's economy. In addition to the generationalized narratives in daily life and media, we have seen a drastic increase in using terms such as, quote, the elderly or senior citizens. But what does it mean to be elderly? The definitions can actually vary across countries and contexts. The Canadian government, for example, typically classifies people aged 65 years old as elderly, at which point these citizens are eligible for federal benefits such as the Canada Pension Plan and old age security payments. But the World Health Organization, or WHO, has no standard other than noting that 65 years old is the commonly accepted definition in most core nations, but it suggests a cutoff somewhere between 50 and 55 years old for semi-peripheral nations, such as some countries in Africa. Despite these official definitions, what does the elderly or the senior look like in daily life? Let's look at two examples on the street. This sign says, watch for senior citizens. What does this sign mean? Why would there be a need for it on a street? What assumptions about senior citizens might this message be based on? Here's another image. Take a moment to read all of the blue signs. Are these street signs humorous or offensive? What shared assumptions might make them funny. Although this second image might be entertaining or humorous for some people, these simple signs show us that age is not merely a biological function of the number of years a person has lived, or of the physiological changes the body goes through during the life course. There is an element of social construction, where both institutions and individuals define who is elderly or not. 
there's also a shared meaning among people in society that is produced by and reflects the social norms and expectations we have applied to certain age groups. Like other socially constructed categories, age can also be conceptualized in a hierarchical manner. Little et al. in 2014 wrote, quote, age, much like race, class, and gender, is a hierarchy in which some categories are more highly valued than others. The social construction of age, therefore, is not a neutral process. It has real-world implications, including ageism. When someone acts on a prejudice based on age, that is ageism, a form of discrimination. Ageist attitudes and biases based on stereotypes can reduce older people to inferior or limited positions. When ageism is practiced in the workplace or in various facilities like healthcare, it can lead to severe consequences. Older people might experience fear, dismissal, and a lack of power and control in their daily life. Let's now turn to Suki's analysis of ageism in work, in the context of sexuality, and under COVID care.